offense. New England's offense is Texas offense because they came after Charlie Weiss left, and Charlie Weiss is the founder of that offense. And so when you talk about formations, you may see 20 different formations, 25 different formations in a game, but that really doesn't, that isn't really complex to an offense. It is complex to a defense because offensively, you will run the same plays that you're running in one formation out of the other. But it just makes it extremely complex for the defense to get lined up. Coach Haywood, I don't have a question for you, but... Uh... One second, Marquise. Recruiting, we're definitely going to recruit the entire state of Texas. And I got a call from some high school coaches over in Louisiana today that have some players for me to come over and look at. It. And I'm going to go over there and look at some players over in Louisiana. I spent... Uh, I think 10 to 12 years recruiting the state of Louisiana. Yes, Marquise. Coach, I don't have a question for you, but I just wanted to, when I heard that you were getting the head coaching job here and I called you yesterday and I played for you at LSU the first year, I remember going through the same process with you. You know, before we got to LSU, they had lost six, seven straight years, you know, and, and, and Coach Haywood was the best recruit on that staff. He convinced <clears throat> myself, Kevin Falk, Rondell Mealy, all those guys to come to LSU and, and you know, and he was always one of the best coaches on the staff. He was always tough, but he was fair. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and when you're coaching those kind of guys, you can't you can't have favoritism. You know, when you have Kevin Falk and you have Rondell, you have a Cesar Collins. You know, you always have to be fair with those guys. And uh, I just want to let you guys know you're getting a hell of a coach, and he'll be definitely turning it around. So happy for you, coach, and uh, good luck, baby. <laughs> First of all, congratulations, welcome back. Uh, two questions for you. First, one of the challenges local schools have often had is recruiting Houston talent and getting them to stay. I know you've recruited Houston forever, but how do you plan to address getting kids that play here in town to stay in town? One of the things is about relationships and what you have. And as we stated, as, as it was stated by, the, uh, by Charles previously, is that they didn't have Houston grown talent are Houston grown coaches. And I was born and raised here and have recruited here for over 24 years. So it's about relationships that you develop. You know, it's about relationships that not only you develop, you develop with the high school coaches, but it's relationships that you develop, develop over the years with the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the nieces, the nephews. You know, you've coached their aunts and uncles 20 years ago, and now they say, hey, he's supposed to come he needs to come to you, coach. He needs to come to a certain type of man, and you're the right type of man for him to come to. At the second time, it's also about identifying the appropriate talent, all right, and understanding the appropriate talent. There were guys that I sent to Texas Southern last year that people in Friendswood and Clear Lake were calling me about, hey, we need you to help us getting our young, getting our young student athletes placed. And I helped place some of their student athletes in the SWAT conference last year. So over the last four or five years, I've been called by different coaches and different parents to help place their children. Can you talk about the two coaches or the coaches or the, if there's just one that have had the most impact on you in your career? I know you work with some amazing coaches. Well, I think the first one is Nick Saban. Uh, Nick Saban is a guy that manages the entire program. And when I say manages the entire program, he understands what the janitor is doing, what the trainer is doing, what the field people are doing, all the way up to the assistant head coach, the offense coordinator, defense coordinator. So he basically manages the entire program from the day he walks into that building to the day he leaves. Um, Matt Brown is probably the best politician I've ever met in this world. He should run for governor. <laughs> He is unbelievable in the way that he handles the media and the alumni, along with handling the coaches and making sure that the coaches are doing everything appropriately. I remember he walked into a room and said, hey, Vince Young's gonna be your starting quarterback. Greg Davis looked at him and like, are you kidding me? He said, no, he's gonna be your starting quarterback. So within an hour, we had changed the entire offense. And we went out, rushed for 320-some yards, 330-some yards, and we ended up winning the game by 
30 some points. He understands how to push the right buttons. Charlie Weiss is probably the best offensive mind that I've ever been around. I mean, my first year we lined up in an unbalanced set with the tight end over to the nup side, and he says, all right, go ahead on and hit your head on the goal post. It's touchdown. Fazano runs down the field. Brady Quinn hits him on a touchdown pass over the middle. Touchdown. I didn't see it. However, I learned to see it because he taught me more about pass protection and throwing the football than anybody that I've ever been around. And a gentleman by the name of Morris Watts, who was with George Perlis, if you ever want to learn how to run the football, you go see Morris Watts. And those guys are probably the most instrumental guys in my career. Any more questions? I just have one last question. Um, the gentleman asked you about formation, and you talked about what well, the Patriots run and the Texans run. You and I talked about this. That's an offense that is supposedly so complicated. So um, why bring something so complicated? Or is it like you said, it doesn't have to be as complicated as it's been made out to be? It is not as, it's only as complicated as you make it. I think people have to understand, and players have to understand in the teaching philosophy. For example, if you're a wide receiver, everything is, everything is designed by being number one, number two, and number three, and number four. And it's, everything is conceptual. So it's one-man concepts, two-man concepts, three-man concepts, four-man concepts. So if you line up at number two, you know exactly what you're supposed to do. You line up at number three, you know exactly what you're supposed to do. And it's extremely easy to learn. Because once you get into position, you're out here as the number one wide receiver with a certain concept, you're basically told what to do. Uh, when it gets into the, into the run game, you run the same run plays over and over and over again versus different fronts. So that when you get into a game and we come over and we make what we call midstream adjustments by changing the blocking scheme, everybody's on the same plate, everybody's on the same page. And uh, it can be complex by formations, but verbiage, you know, it really isn't that complex. And you look at it this way, when the Texans played two weeks ago, they brought a quarterback off the street. Was it T.J. Yakes? Yeah, yes. They brought T.J. Yakes in off the street. He got the offense in one week and they won the football game. So how complicated is that? Yeah. And my father just walked in the room. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, ma'am, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I look forward to being there as well. We have any more questions? Um, I have a lot of trouble out of PB. You, you think you can find yourself for the end time to beat them this coming year? I will say this to you. We will always approach one game at a time. All right? And as I look at the schedule, PB is the first game on the schedule. Our goal is to be the best team on the field that day. Not concerned about anybody else but PG. And if we're the best team on the field and the most physical team on the field, you'll see their coach hang up a white flag. <laughs> because that is what our goal is. My aunt is a Jackson State graduate. I'm so sick of her texting me. Where is the band? Asbury is uh, her husband's best buddy. So throughout the whole game, she's texting me the score. Where's the band? And of course, we lost at the end, so maybe we can fix this next year. But I know it's financial. We have got to get the band and the lawn and have a caravan to Jackson State just for my art. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to get things to get set to wrap things up here. Uh, just a few quick notes. Um, you can follow and catch all of the latest breaking news regarding 
the Texas Southern Tigers football program, as well as new head football coach Michael Haywood, by going to our official website, that's www.tsusports.com. You can also follow us via our social media avenues at TXSO Tigers for Instagram and Twitter, as well as for YouTube. Once again, in closing, we'll be available for one-on-ones right after we have a few photo opportunities here on stage. Once again, thank you to all of our viewers on YouTube and for all of you who took time out your day to be here with us. Thank you.